Okay, great. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this week's uh, webinar. An amazing group of people and ready for another great webinar today. Uh, lots of great things going on in our EVO community. And so let me briefly go over what we've done in week two so far. So this week we focused on one major issue, um, identifying a potential research area. Uh, we asked the participants to have a moment of reflection on their classrooms and uh, think about a few issues they've been wondering about lately in relation to their teaching and jot down questions and share with the other participants in the group. So that's what we did. Uh, so this could be either a puzzle, such as doubts or questions they have about their students and their learning, or a challenging situation, uh, something that did not work and they would like to know why. Or this could be an achievement or a success story, not a puzzle, not a uh, question, a challenging situation. A success story could be something that worked and they would like to explore the reasons leading to that success so that they understand the dynamics and conditions that contributes to that success. And that is the conditions creating effective teaching and learning so that they can replicate that uh, moments of success. Uh, but we also highlight that if you are not sure about how to create a research question yet from a puzzle identified, uh, we ask the participants like, um, just say what the challenge or the puzzle is. Uh, the online mentors, uh, the moderators or the other community members will try to offer help and suggestions to formulate or reformulate the questions. Just provide the details of the situation the puzzle as clearly as you can that is what we wanted encouraged so that we or the other community members uh, can understand the situation the puzzle the condition and can give advice and suggestions and our colleagues have also been given a number of resources to refer to uh, such as the book by richard smith and paula rebollado a handbook for exploratory action research and a few more other sources available online, all providing very useful tips and advice on how to write significant, manageable and measurable research questions uh, to explore. So we're very happy with the contributions, both by participants sharing their questions and engaging in interaction with others, offering tips, advice and suggestions. And one of the most frequently raised issues, as you might already guess, is online teaching and learning practices and the issues related to it, like how to encourage learner engagement and participation, how to support learner interaction and production and so on. So uh, that's it from me about week two activity. And now I think over to Sydney uh, for an introduction to this week's webinar and which we're all looking forward to. Sydney, over to you. Sydney, I think your mic is muted. There you go. Uh, hello, everyone. Before we actually dive in, let me introduce you to Dr. Emily Edwards. Um, Dr. Emily Edwards is a lecturer in academic language and learning at the University of Technology, Sydney, Australia. She teaches designs, materials, and advises on discipline specific academic literacy at the university level. And her main research interests are teacher professional development action research, academic literacy, and she supports teacher research and writing through her work on the EI Tech World Research SIG Committee. So now without any further ado, over to you, Dr. Emily Edwards, and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much, Sydney, um, for the introduction. And thank you so much, everybody, for being here um, and for having me here to present this webinar. I'm really happy to be part of the EBO this year. Um, for the first time so that's it's really wonderful i'm just going to share my screen with my powerpoint to get started and here we go that should be good for everybody i hope yeah wonderful okay so for the recording i'm just going to put this speaker box uh, the uh, the video down at the bottom hopefully that's okay as well all right, so let's get started. So I'm going to talk to you today and also invite you to discuss and reflect on um, and, and ask me questions about the benefits and challenges of teacher research. And um, it's really nice to be part of this lineup of, of speakers um, presenting webinars as part of the EVO. 
Um, for those of you who joined with Mark, what, uh, Mark uh, last, um, last week, yeah, um, 10 days ago, uh, I'd probably touch on some of the points that he made. And I'm sure that I'll touch on points that then the other speakers will talk about, uh, especially Gary, maybe when he's talking about identities. Um, so that's an area that I'm going to talk about a little bit as well. So hopefully you'll be able to make connections between the different webinars. The, the structure of this webinar today, um, we'll go through a few introductions. I'll just introduce myself and I've got a, an activity for everybody to get started with. And then we'll focus on these two questions. What are the benefits of teacher research? in a very positive way. And then what are the challenges of teacher research? Um, and there are lots of difficulties that you might have already experienced or be experiencing or in the future, but there are also ways to get through those. So we'll talk about tensions, but also possible directions and ways um, you can go forward. So I just wanted to introduce myself and my background to teacher research very briefly. So I'm going to be talking a lot today about action research, which is a specific form of teacher research, um, one of many, such as exploratory action research, exploratory practice, reflective practice, um, which you um, have probably been introduced to already and we'll be discussing, I think, a bit more with Kenan. So my view of action research is that it, or my definition is that it's investigating a classroom issue or puzzle through strate strategic action, critical reflection, ideally collaboration, although that doesn't always happen, um, to improve practice and understandings. So it is, I think, puzzling and exploring, but also trying to act um, on your, your classroom situation to change something and hopefully improve your understanding as well. So how did I get that? This is the, the process of action research that I follow um, and have followed so far. And I'm sure you're familiar with these cycles of action research. You might've seen them in different places before where action research is conceived of as four different steps within a cycle of planning, acting, observing and reflecting that then go through to the next cycle. Uh, this is a quite a simplistic way of seeing it. Of course, it's much messier in real life, but it's quite handy, I think, to have that, that view of action research. And um, I got into action research through a program in Australia when I was working as an English language teacher. And um, this program was advertised. It was quite new at the time. Um, inviting teachers to submit a proposal to take part in a national action research program with Professor Anne Byrne, as you can see there in the photo. So I applied and got accepted, and this was my first time that I ever did research, um, and it was action research. And it really opened up a world of opportunity for um, doing more research and, and also connecting with people who are interested in these things. So that was really um, a great experience for me. That was back in 2012. And my action research pro uh, project was on um, assessment and learner autonomy and trying to use assessment rubrics to help my learners to become more autonomous in um, feeding, getting their feedback and feeding forward with their feedback. So that's a really interesting program that happens in Australia every year. Okay, so that's a bit of background on why I got into action research. And, and since then, I've been continuing to focus on action research. Uh, my PhD looked at the impact of action research on teachers and I'm continuing to work with action research in my current role. But before we go any further, um, I'd like you to have a look at this image and think about ways it might relate to teacher research. When you look at that, is that what comes to mind in terms of teacher research, if anything? Um, and if you could add any ideas that you have to the chat box, please, that would be great. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to have a think and if you have any ideas at all, just add them straight in. Sorry, click back. Looking at the chat box here. Flourishing like flowers, that's lovely. <laughs> One stands out as it's closer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many things to be observed. Absolutely, when we're investigating the classroom and our teaching practice, different types of growth. You are not alone. Mm -hmm. Standing out from the rest, don't fit in. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, it's a process as well as the growing of flowers and it needs time and dedication, absolutely. The 
the idea of a community, mm -hmm. different identities. Yeah. Teacher inquiry. Mm -hmm. Passion, yeah, <laughs> passion for research. <laughs> Similar issues and concerns. We have a lot of uh, poppies with the same, the same look similar concerns, the whole picture. We need to search all details. On Facebook, people are saying growth. Yeah, okay, wonderful. So many ideas. Um, thank you so much for adding those in. Individual differences, same and different at the same time. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize uh, the chat there again, but thank you for your contributions and keep going if you have more ideas. Um, in Australia, the context that I work in and research in, there's this concept of tall poppies um, and there are actually awards for scientists and probably in other countries too, where um, scientists who achieve, um, who are high achievers, who achieve something special are awarded the tall poppy award. So there's a really positive aspect to it that you might stand out or that you might be able to showcase the work that you're doing. Uh, there are also some tensions involved in that and I'll come back to this image later and refer to it when I'm talking about um, some of the findings from my research. So let's continue on. We're going to focus now on the benefits of teacher research. So what are they according to the literature on teacher research? Uh, but before we look at the benefits, what do we actually mean by benefits? In the sense that I'm researching it, I'm thinking about teacher research, but the benefits of teacher research as leading to development or transformation of teachers. And I've got some definitions of those two words here. So development, is according to Van Leer, a process involving both cognition, so those, those mental, that uh, the cognitive as processes that happen in our brain, internalizing new knowledge, perceptions or beliefs, as well as identities. And we've already heard a bit about identities um, today, continuously renegotiating a sense of self. So I see those two aspects as equally as important and they're, they're both part of development as a teacher and they both develop through doing teacher research. Now, in terms of transformation, I think that's also very important because if you've experienced teacher research, you might have felt that you've already transformed or you will be transforming, I'm sure, as you go through this process now. So we can think of transformation as a long-term, continuous and dynamic process that can be observed when teachers make sustained changes to their practice, understandings, engagement with self or, or sen with others or sense of self. I really like this idea of sustained changes. So when you do teacher research, you are often making a change in your classroom or to your practice or approach. But I think the real test of whether it's been a transform transformative is whether that change is sustained or not necessarily that one change that you make, but related changes that you learn about through your research. Are they sustained? Do they continue over time? And this is some, uh, some aspect where it's quite useful to have somebody else observing you or giving you feedback that you might not always notice that yourself. So this is the view that I have of, of um, development and transformation. And just before we go into the actual benefits, the way that I'm seeing the benefits are in terms of this ecological view of development and transformation. So um, you might have seen this kind of um, system diagram before of ecological systems. And again, it's based on the work of Van Leer and others. Um, and I really like this concept. I think it really works well. So there's the micro system in that inner level, the inner circle of the individual teacher and their classroom. So there's a lot of benefits for the individual teacher and we'll see many of those in the next slides. But it's not only at that level that we can see benefits from teacher research. There's also at the MISO system, which is a level more broad, broader than the micro system, involving the institutional environment as well as the program that you're part of. So in this case, the EVO. Um, the project or initiative that you're part of when you're doing it, teacher research. And there are impacts at that level. There are also impacts even more broadly at the macro system level. So the sector that you might be part of in your country, um, the educational sector, but also the social system, the cultural beliefs in your country about education and research, the political systems and values. So conditions that teachers work under the uh, policies that apply to English language or language teachers in your context. So um, I like to have this view of, of how the teachers can benefit from research. It's not just the individual, it's, it's, I think it's broader. This comes from an article that I've recently published um, in Educational Action Research. It's not freely, down, freely downloadable, um, but I've got the, the reference there. I do have some more which are freely downloadable and I'll put those in the chat box when we get to them. 
So let's look at the individual teacher first and the benefits that they might um, see from develop from taking part in teacher research. So in what ways do teachers develop or transform individually from conducting, this is specifically about action research, but I think the benefits are very similar for other forms of research too. So increased awareness or reflectivity, this is something that in my research, when I studied teachers in Australia, I found was really, really um, clear that they became more aware in many different ways, aware of themselves, aware of their students, aware of what they were doing. And this was actually a blessing and a curse, as we'll see later. Um, but it's, of course, it's a very positive thing to be more aware of, of your practice and more reflective on your practice. As we mentioned before, these identities are really important. So new teacher researcher identities, not only researcher, but um, different ways of seeing yourself as a teacher as well. So for example, as maybe a mentor or a leader uh, in terms of the maybe materials you've designed or the way that you're doing something in your school. Greater autonomy. Um, the teachers benefited from having more autonomy. They had this toolkit of teacher research, which enabled them to then take action when they wanted to in the classroom in the future. Renewed enthusiasm and motivation for their teaching career. We all get stuck every now and then, and we need something to inspire us to move forward. So teacher research can be something that really does that and, and gives you that motivation, especially for teachers who have been teaching for quite a long time, I found. Improved self-efficacy beliefs. So believing in your abilities to do things. And I found that it's really um, important for teachers to, be to believe that they can do something because that in improvement in confidence can really then interact with their identities and in transformation of identities, as well as new appreciation for collaboration. So through doing action research, either collaboratively or individually, teachers were able to see that, okay, I can collaborate, collaborate with my colleagues in various ways. And that's not always something that we do. We're often in these silos where you work on your course by yourself or with your students by yourself. Um, so having that appreciation for collaboration is really, really nice. I forgot to mention at the start of this that I will ask you about the benefits that you have perceived um, in your own experience and maybe so far already on this EVO uh, when we come to the end of the benefits. So you might want to refer back to a few of these ideas if they relate to you. Okay, so those, those previous um, areas and that previous slide were just general professional development, general ways that teachers improve. Now, specifically in terms of teaching, there are some specific ways that teachers um, can improve. So improved understanding of learners' needs and perspectives. Through doing teacher research, you are talking a lot more often to your students. You're finding out information from them through surveys, questionnaire, questionnaires, um, focus groups, interviews, analyzing their work in a different way. So that gives you more perspectives, uh, different ways of seeing students, which teachers have found to be really beneficial. And the teachers also develop theoretical and practical knowledge for teaching. So in whatever area it is that you're focused in, um, you can expect to develop your knowledge in that area. So for example, in teaching listening and speaking, um, learner autonomy, assessment, all of those areas. Enhanced confidence about teaching. And um, a lot of teachers said they really felt that doing teacher research and collecting that evidence gave them something to say, look, this shows that I'm doing something really well or if it doesn't, that I can improve it. So now I know what to do to improve my teaching. And that made them feel more confident. And the development of teaching practice in general. So lots of benefits for teaching specifically. And then also lots of benefits for research. So for a lot of teachers, it can be the first time that they do teacher research. And of course, there's the development of research skills and other areas within the research. Um, an important one is changing perceptions and beliefs about research. So what I found and a lot of other studies in this review found was that teachers before doing teacher re research thought of it as something that was not achievable, not feasible for them. That it might've been something very, research is very scientific, it's very big, large scale studies. It's not something that I can do. So doing teacher research then allows you to change your beliefs about its relevance to you. And as I mentioned, research skills. So um, how to conduct research, how to design instruments, how to analyze data, and how to reflect on data are all important skills, as well as sustained engagement in research. The teachers that I studied in Australia didn't necessarily continue doing action research after the end of their program because they found that it, they didn't have enough time or often, 
some of them did, some of them set up collaborative projects together, but others said they had this sustained engagement in research, either by reading research or by doing different types of research or joining um, larger projects in their schools. So those were all um, the benefits for individual teachers of taking part in teacher research. Now, I also mentioned that it's important to look at the broader benefits. So I've listed here some of the broader benefits at the MISO and the macro level of teachers engaging in action research specifically. So I'll just let you have a look through those instead of me reading. So you can see that these are all quite powerful impacts. Uh, it's not just at your individual level of, of, of a teacher development, but there are many ways that um, your colleagues, your school, the broader sector can, can benefit from your teacher research project or yours with your colleagues. I think at this point, though, that's where it gets quite difficult sometimes in certain contexts and we'll come to the tensions that can be involved. But there's lots of positive um, benefits there for teachers more broadly from engaging in teacher research. So at this point, I thought it would be quite nice to go into breakout rooms and for you to meet a few other um, teachers that are taking part today and think about these two questions. So can you identify with any of the benefits that I've mentioned so far, which ones sort of stood out as being really crucial? And maybe there are other benefits that I haven't mentioned that you might have experienced or you might imagine that you could experience from your, from your um, teacher research engagement at the moment. So um, into the breakout rooms, wonderful. And we'll have five minutes and then come back for, for um, sharing your ideas at the end. So Ashley, would you like me to join a breakout room or should I stay here? Well, Emily, um, as you wish, if you want, you can visit the breakout rooms. There are 10 of those, 10 breakout rooms. 10 breakout rooms, okay. I'm happy to, I'm happy to stay here if anyone has any questions so far they can ask. Yeah, and if that's the yeah. case, we're going to get a notification saying that somebody in particular breakout room uh, needs you. Okay. I'm happy either way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you would like to broadcast a message to the uh, breakout rooms, we can also do that. So you gave five minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Can I broadcast the message myself? Um, or do you want to? Can uh, uh, you you can give it a try? So if you uh, click on breakout rooms, does it give you uh, the choice broadcast message to all? Because as a co-host, uh, you can't open a breakout room. But if you have a message, I, I, you know I can broadcast uh, it to uh, all the rooms. Okay, I can't see that option. All right then, I'll do it for you. Okay, I'll be your messenger. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> So maybe two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. Done. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. And in the meantime, we've got uh, some viewers on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there are any questions or comments uh, regarding these questions, I'm, we're going to transfer them to you as well. Okay, wonderful. And there are still 15 participants in the room. So mm -hmm. uh, in, you may not want to miss this opportunity of talking to other educators from all around the world. Can you please just follow the links and join them?
So do you think we should come back now, Ashley? Yeah, it, it would be a good time. Yes, perfect. If you could ask them to come back, that would be great. So I I close the breakout rooms. Uh, all the breakout rooms, they're going to close in 54 seconds. Okay. Okay. Yep. Great. So when you come back from the breakout rooms, if you want to add anything into the chat box about what you discussed, um, then go up there. please go ahead. Um, if not, that's fine. And I can have a quick look if there's anything that you want to, to uh, bring up. I think everyone has come back. Okay, wonderful. I was going to ask you to um, add any ideas that that came up from your discussion into the into the chat box, but I think we probably better move on so that we um, get through the next section and, and have time for another discussion at the end of this one. And then I will ask you at that point to share. That would be. I would really like to hear um, ideas that you have. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that discussion um, and had lots of ideas about the ways that you can benefit from teacher research. Let's move on to the challenges of teacher, teacher research. And again, at the end of this section, then we'll have a breakout room discussion. And at that point, we can share a little bit more. So the way that I like to think about uh, challenges of teacher research is the idea of paradoxes, that I think that there are, there are lots of paradoxes that come up um, when you're doing teacher research. So for example, the first one, Teacher research, we're talking about it in a school context or in an institutional context, it must be mandated, and, but it also can't be mandated. So what that means is in order to get teachers to do it, it kind of has to be made compulsory in a way, but also that doesn't work with motivation. So it has to always be voluntary, like the one that you're doing now, in order for teachers to take part in it. So is this a paradox? I mean, it might not be it's something we can think about. The second one, it must be championed by a strong principle. So the leader of the school needs to really believe in it in order for it to take off and to, to be successful. But it also can't be owned by the principal. If it is, then teachers don't have ownership, right? So that's another sort of tension there. The third one, there must be an outside actor. This means somebody coming in to do some help, to help teachers with the data analysis, for example, or to help them understand the concepts that they're researching. So it's quite useful to have an, an outside actor come in to the school or the institutional context, but this outside actor's role is a bit questionable because they are an expert, um, whereas teachers are actually experts of their practice. Um, so is that something that can be reconciled? Teachers must learn research skills. So in order to do teacher research really well, uh, they have to learn that these new skills of research but at the same time, they need to trust their own knowledge so they, so they don't get overwhelmed. Um, and that's very, very important. Your teacher's intuition is something that is, is a, it can be valued above all else. Uh, the fifth one, teachers ch teaching changes profoundly by doing teacher research. At the same time, they say, well, actually it confirmed what I already knew. Maybe that's something that you've experienced. Um, and teacher research must be woven into the fabric of the school culture. So in order for it to be sustainable, for it to be to keep going in a school, it, I, I believe as well that it really has to be something that becomes part of the culture. But at the same time, um, these authors of this, of this article uh, argue that teacher research is contrary to the culture of schools in that I think they say that we don't work collaboratively in this way and that we don't sort of question our practice in, in, a, in an ongoing way that is part of a culture. So that might not be your experience. Um, in the context of this article was um, uh, research that happens in US schools, um, in the school system. So where you're working might be quite different. So are these all absolute paradoxes? Can you see any resolutions between the pairs of tensions? Do you have any, any thoughts or reflections that you'd like to share on, on these? If you could add those to the chat box.
school culture based research is good. Absolutely. If you if you're working in a context where you have that, then um, you, then I think that's that's fantastic. Teacher research should not be regarded as contrary to school culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that in the authors in this article argue that, but that they think that that's what is the prevalent um, view. Education in a school can be as qualified as the teachers are. Mm -hmm. Teachers would engage with research more if they were supported, given time, financially compensated as part of their professional development. Yeah, absolutely. These are things that I'm going to touch on as well. I think so too. Yes, I'd like to second that. I agree with the presentation. It really sh should be mandatory culture for an English teacher to go on at least to go on at least to go one AR in a semester with students. Mm -hmm. Out, outer actor to be objective. Sharing will bring discussions, which in turn enriches developing. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Keep um, adding contributions. I'm just going to minimize the chat though to continue. But um, thank you for your ideas. And I think um, these tensions are really interesting. They depend on the on the context that you work in, and some of them might be, uh, be um, there in your context, and some might not. So let's continue thinking about these this idea of tensions. So when I conducted research looking at teachers doing action research in Australia, what I found were was that there were four key tensions in the way that action research could have an impact on the teachers and their schools. And we're going to look at each of these in, in a bit more detail. So the first one, reflective mindsets. As I said, this reflectivity was really something that stood out, um, but no time for reflection when teachers went back into their classrooms. Tension two, desire for positive recognition, but more negative recognition. And here we come to the tall poppy idea, which we'll go back to. Um, tension three, renewed commitment to teaching, but, but commitment not rewarded. And tension four, opportunities for action research materials integration into the school's curriculum, but inflexible curricula. So we're going to go through each of these and what I found, and then what I'd like you to do is to reflect on um, which one might be more, most relevant to you, if any of them are, or if there's any other tensions that are um, things that you consider important in your context. So, um, wonderful, okay. Let's look at the first tension, reflective mindsets, but no time for reflection. So in an interview with a teacher um, that I worked with, the teacher said they moved away from this trial and error approach to teaching that they had before towards a frame of mind of thoughtful, reflective teaching through doing action research. This is really nice. I really like this idea. Um, action research is almost like a curse because from here on, you can never just do something and not reflect on it. So this teacher was laughing. She meant it in a, in a positive way way but at the same time she was like I can't do anything now because every time I do something in my classroom I'm thinking oh is that the way that I should do it I could do it like this I could research this so that's actually a really wonderful way to be thinking but it means you're constantly busy <laughs> and constantly running out of time to do things so there's this idea of action research being a curse and you might feel like that at some point of your teacher research experience so this is yeah Homer Simpson's curse ah what do I do uh, why is reflection important or is it important? Uh, I like this quote from um, Clark. Let's just have a quick read of this quote. So there's lots of things there that sound really nice that a lot of us might not be able to have in our context. Um, the small classes, hospitable classrooms, the resources. Um, is there anything that you, as you, as you read this quote, um, that, you can, that you think about? So to what extent do you agree or disagree with it? And are these suggestions feasible in your institutional context to become reflective practitioners? Again, if you want to add anything to the chat, um, that would be great. If not, that's also fine. We can just move on to the next topic. Okay, so teaching load versus conducting research from face, Jake on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for teachers to reconcile that, I think. It's great, but no time for reflection in my context. 
And a lot of teachers found that as soon as they'd done teacher research, their um, principal said, okay, you're a really experienced, motivated teacher. Here you go, you have a difficult course to teach. <laughs> and so then they had even less time. Okay, wonderful. If you have any more ideas, keep sharing them, but I'm just going to uh, minimize the chat again and continue on with the next um, uh, topic, which is to think about the directions or the solutions to the first tension. So these are ideas that I share in um, a journal article in, in English Australia Journal, um, which is freely accessible. And I'll put the link, if I remember, hopefully at the end in the chat box. Um, structured time for reflection within school professional development programs. So often, at least in Australia, they have uh, schools have professional development programs, but they don't have time for reflection. It's not something that's an activity in itself. So that could be added in rather than attending lots of workshops. Let's have some time to actually sit and, and discuss and reflect. The second one is training for school leaders so they can then um, find funding to support professional development. So there are um, opportunities available, uh, especially lots of online opportunities, and they might be able to get funding from different sources. And the third one, after conducting action research um, it, as a teacher, you could discuss with your supervisor or your school principal how to continue reflecting from your project. Don't just leave it there. So that's a really important message to take away from today. Um, when you're doing your teacher research at the moment or you get started with it, then you uh, conduct it. Don't stop there. Think, OK, how can I continue with this in my school and talk to somebody in your school about that? So you could start up a discussion group about your research topic. Um, you could continue with informal cycles of research and then present at a professional development day in your school or another event that happens in your context. So there's lots of ways that reflection can be woven in, even in a, in a, um, a timetable that's very, very rigid um, with seemingly not very many opportunities. So the second tension was this idea of uh, teacher researchers wanting to be recognized for their work because they put in a lot of work. It's hard work and you know, it's all, the, what, what you guys are doing is all voluntary and you're working really hard. And so it's important to be recognized for that, but sometimes you can encounter negative recognition. And I don't mean to say this in a way that it's, okay, it's not a good thing. Uh, it, more in a way that let's think about how we can tackle it when you, if you do experience it, hopefully you don't. So um, in a survey comment from a teacher I worked with, they said the colleagues who aren't interested in my action research project because they perceive it as a mini PhD in a short amount of time. Um, of course, it's not a mini PhD and a, mini, a PhD takes several years to complete. Um, it's a very different thing to doing an action research or teacher research project. It shouldn't be seen as the same thing, but often teachers might, your colleagues might think of it like that. So um, it's important, I think, to then tell them, look, it's not, it's something really feasible that I can, that I'd, I've been doing and that you can do too. And another teacher said in an interview, it's a lot of hard work and nobody in my center cares. Nobody was paying attention. It was as if nothing has happened, frustrating. So especially if you do the teacher research outside of your institution, if it's something separate like I did, um, and then you go back into your school, you continue working there and you think, oh, surely people <laughs> care about my research. Why don't they? Um, but it's quite normal to, to have that experience that nobody really, you know, they're busy, they're doing their normal teaching. They don't see a direct relationship maybe with your research. So that can be really frustrating, but there are ways around this. Um, think about it thinking about your school leaders your principals they might not value research as much as you do as well so some of the managers that i work with in the context that i work is um english language intensive courses for overseas students in australia um short courses for, Eng for english language courses so one of the managers said while having some research conducted in our center is interesting it's not our main bread so that's not the main focus for them Another manager, we're doers and we get practical and research is often housed in that area of university and bigger things. And yet we know that best practice is informed by research. So while she knew that it was important to integrate research, she wasn't quite sure that it was actually something that teachers should be doing because we're really practical. But teacher research is one of the most practical things that you can do, I think. So again, it's about these perceptions of research that you might encounter, and then you can, can, um, can explain how um, teacher research is actually really practical. It's not part of a university. It's not something that's, that's different and bigger than teaching. It's part of teaching. So here are some directions from Tension 2. Schools can recognize teacher, teachers' research achievements in sensitive ways. 
Um, for example, in collaborative events, collaborative forums, meetings, rather than making it about the individual, I think it's really important to say, okay, how can we all benefit from this? Taking a more critical approach. So uh, Mockler and Groundwater Smith in this, this article, they talk about not celebrating teacher research, but saying, hmm, what did we learn from that that actually we could change in our context? Um, it's not something that we say, yes, we've solved that problem, now it's all good, but what can we continue doing to continue reflecting and being critical in our practice? And that's actually a really interesting way forward. Also publishing your research, so many different ways that you can do this, it doesn't have to be formal, it can be really informal, like a blog or a teaching magazine um, to promote the research. And you could also initiate a small scale um, teacher research program for teachers in your school. So once you've taken part in a program like this one, you could become a mentor for others. And that's a really wonderful way to take it forward and to change some of those perceptions that might be occurring in your school. Hopefully not, as I said. Okay, so the third tension was the idea of teachers feeling more committed to their profession after doing teacher research, but didn't always feel that that was rewarded. And that links back to the previous tension of not feeling that others are recognizing us, maybe. So one teacher said, participating in the action research program reignited my fire for teaching. And there was this kind of watershed moment where I decided I am a teacher, hear me roar, <laughs> rather than I'll do this for a while and see what happens next. So that's wonderful, such a positive affirmation of the fact that he was, um, he was a very professional teacher. He wanted to continue doing this work. So you hopefully you'll feel that kind of, that, that, that fire as well. Um, another teacher said that my action research project was largely ignored because my director of studies, that's the name of the, the, the leader principal, said my center was about profit and money. And this is the case in many um, language centers around the world, I'm sure, and hopefully not so much in other school contexts, but um, language education has become something that is um, all about profit in some contexts. And then some principals don't see that actually rewarding teachers is part of, of, of making teachers continue working really well. So that can be an issue. Let's think about some ways forward. So finding ways of rewarding teachers commitment within the existing limitations. So there are lots of different ways that teachers could be um, given different roles and responsibilities after they've taken part in research. As I said before, they could become a mentor. They could also become a curriculum leader for a certain aspect of materials or um, ideas that they've developed through their research. They could lead discussion groups. They could set up a journal, become the editor of the journal in their context. It could be a, a really informal journal in your context. Um, I think it's really important to encourage the idea of bottom-up professional development. So that's from teachers working from the ground up and with their motivation and ideas. With teachers have autonomy to decide what's important this is a crucial, but at the same time, there needs to be that top down support from managers. So ideally, we want to get managers and, and coordinators and professional development um, educators on board so they can provide that support in terms of the time for reflection, any finances involved. And the fourth tension, the idea that when you do teacher research, you often have lots of great materials that you've created and activities, different approaches that should be integrated into the curriculum or the syllabus that you work with, but often they're quite inflexible. So they might not be a space in the curriculum that you work in to integrate your new fantastic idea that you've developed. Um, so this is quite a difficult tension because it might be, it's quite difficult to solve. Uh, I like this quote from Hammersley who says that teachers using their research-based knowledge to design and improve the curricula is argu arguably the core of a proper understanding of teacher professionalism. So if we just, have um, syllabuses or course books that are, that are provided for us without actually having the autonomy to um, create our own materials and our own uh, curriculum or syllabus for our students, it can be quite difficult. Uh, we can feel that we don't have enough agency as teachers. Uh, but there are always ways, I think, that you can, um, you can be agentive with your research. One teacher I work with said, if I listen to everyone else, um, the other action research participants, they have, have had problems with um, curricula that they can't change. For me, it's been a breeze. It's been absolutely fantastic integrating her ideas into the curriculum. So it really depends on your, on your school context. Some ideas for, to go forward. So schools could create short-term positions for teachers, as I mentioned before, um, to formally integrate their materials into the school's curriculum. If it's not possible, the materials could be um, set up as a series of supplementary resources, maybe for self-study 
that's what I did in my um, school context. We couldn't integrate all of the materials that I created. So I created a sort of in the library some self-study resources for students to use. And then before commencing your action research or maybe your next teacher research project, ensure that it's relevant to your school's current needs if you want your materials to then be taken on board by them. If you're not concerned about that, it doesn't matter so much. But I think it's quite good to align your interests and needs with those in your school if, if that works for you. Okay, just to summarize then, there are lots of benefits of teachers engaging in action research and teacher research more broadly, but there are also lots of tensions or constraints that I mentioned in the last slides. There are always solutions. They're dependent on context, but they're always there. So I would like you now to, I'll have a little break from talking and for you to think about those four tensions, which ones maybe resonated with you? Which of the four tensions do you think might apply to your teaching context? Maybe none of them do. Um, and then in your breakout um, room, if you could think about one of those specific tensions or another one and think about how you would overcome it in your context. Okay, so I'm going to go and join a breakout room this time. So if you can follow the links and join the breakout rooms, that would be awesome. Yeah, that's great. Have fun, everyone. Let me know if there's an issue regarding the link. Please follow the link. Join your uh, uh, you know, colleagues in the breakout rooms. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you.
So we're waiting for our guests and participants uh, to be back from the breakout rooms. And okay. Uh, less than a minute, everyone will be back in the uh, main room, I guess. Okay. I hope everybody had a good discussion, fruitful, you know, full of ideas. Welcome back, everyone. That's, uh, I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, and one of the participants says, I love the uh, idea of meeting with uh, other colleagues from around the world. That's what we are here for. Uh, we're grateful for your participation and very happy and proud to have all of you. And uh, let's see, where is Emily? I think people are coming back. I guess everyone is, everyone should be back by now. And- Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Would you like to continue now? You need to upload the slides yes. once more, Emily. Yeah, I will. We only have a, a few more minutes, I think. Is that right? I think everyone is back by now. I mean, to, till the end of the of the webinar. There's only a few more minutes left, I think. Sure, sure. We have time and we can extend uh, the time as well. Okay, 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 great. Um, so... Actually, I, I, that's the last slide there. So what I what I thought um, what I thought we could do here is to share ideas from the um, breakout room that you were in. Is there anything that you found that was particularly uh, you know relevant to you in your context? Were there any other tensions that you've experienced, or was there anything that you thought was a great strategy for overcoming the tensions? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you could add your ideas in the chat, that would be great. Fellow teachers all felt that one should turn the deaf ear to negativity. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I hope that everybody can do that. And that I hope you don't experience any negativity. Absolutely. It helped to relate our process of research. Fantastic exchange of ideas. Great. Wonderful. Um, time as a constraint, but considering the rewards of TR, it's worth it. Absolutely. I think you have to think about um, for yourself as well and your own, you know, everyone has their own things going on in their life. Where can it fit in? And if it can't, at a certain point, then wait until it can, and that's fine. Doing action research, sorry. Um, um, like the idea of the tension is how to start, yes. And I think that's what you're going to be focus, focusing on at the moment in the EVO, which is wonderful. To have a mentor through the process. Yeah, that's a really, really, um, really, really important aspect if you can, if you can find somebody to mentor you. Yes, keep on attending this EVO. That's, that's one strategy. That's the best strategy, I think. Not being encouraged to carry out action research at university. We talked about that in the, in the room that I was in, that if you're doing a research uh, master's or a PhD, you can often be discouraged um, from doing action research as your methodology. But where, in the context that I did my PhD, I was working with, very lucky to work with Professor Anne Burns. And there were several of her students who were doing, uh, using action research as the methodology but it really depends on the university if they accept that. And I hope that more do in the future. Friends and family that who encourage you, Jessica says yes. And work that values what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Negative attitude of the peers and we thought it's best to ignore them and to be an inspiring role model. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to keep on being positive sometimes when um, <laughs> people, are, uh, people are sort of not, um, I think it's the tension between you feel like you've done so much and you want to have that recognition, but you don't always get it. So I suppose if you don't expect it, then it helps as well. You don't expect to always have it. Lack of time in our teaching context, definitely. Um, lack of teacher recognition by colleagues and school authorities, okay. 
You know, and I think by more and more teachers around the world taking part in events like this, then that is also a strategy to solve the, the issues because the more people, more teachers who do um, research through these programs, the, um, the, the more the, those perceptions break down, negative perceptions. So action research will give teachers tools to identify weak and find solutions awareness. Mm -hmm. Encouragement by my friends. Yeah, that's really one of the best ways, isn't it? Friends and family. Workload, time for a lack of time for reflection um, from Facebook. Attention three, come up with guidelines mm -hmm, is a good strategy. There are sometimes guidelines. Um, you might be part of a, of a um, organization in your uh, sector. There might be guidelines um, or maybe even in your school or you could set your own up. Negativity gives confidence to do better. That's great. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for all of your um, comments and for sharing ideas also in the breakout rooms. Challenges become opportunities. I think actually the way that you perceive um, a challenge is also incredibly important. And that's something that I've also researched, the, the way that you perceive something and how that has an impact on you. So hopefully we can, I think through the, the webinar today, maybe be aware of any issues that might come up in your in your teacher research experiences and then be prepared and equipped to um, overcome those challenges and to have the perception that these challenges actually are going to help you in your development so i'd like to just finish by saying that i think teacher research can be a wonderful toolkit for your professional development and if you can think of it as a toolkit that you take away with you from the evo as well that you can use and you can pull out these tools whenever you need to um, to explore something in your classroom or you need evidence of something or you want to improve something, then that's, that's a really great, great way to use it. Um, and this can be through the process of materials development, theory practice integration is a very useful way of using research, leading to wider classroom projects, hopefully in your context. Lots of possibilities for presenting and publishing your work, which is a really important way to um, contribute to those new teacher, research identi teacher researcher identities and cycles for ongoing reflection and integrating that into your work. Even if you don't continue doing teacher research, you can continue being reflective in your work. So that's actually where I wanted to end, um, about on time. But if you have any questions, I would love to hear them as well. And we can spend a few more minutes um, discussing your questions. So at this point, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about or any other related questions that you'd like to um, add into the chat box, and I'll have a look through them. Or Ashley, if there were any other questions that you picked up earlier and you wanted to ask me as well. Thank you so very much, uh, Emily. Um, do we have any questions from the chats, uh, uh, Mariana and Esther, maybe from the Facebook? Um, yes, Ashley, thank you for asking. Uh, there's a question here. It's uh, from Belen. Emily, and it says, what motivated you to start in the field of teacher research? That's a very good question. Um, I, so I was working as an English language teacher and I was looking for opportunities to, for any um, opportunities for professional development beyond my school context. And then luckily at that time, there was, um, there was an advertisement inviting teachers to apply for the National Action Research Programme in Australia that was quite new at that time. So it was a lucky coincidence, I think, <laughs> that, um, that I um, saw that and said, okay, that's something that I need right now. I need a, I need a challenge. I need to reinvigorate my teaching. I had just finished a master's programme. Um, so I suppose as well, I'd heard about action research on the masters, although I wasn't quite sure what it was at that time. And through doing the masters, I knew how important research was, but I didn't really know how to integrate it into my practice. So I just saw it as a really good chance to um, work with other teachers from other institutions and, um, and do something different. And then I took part in that program. It was a year, about a year. Um, and through working on that program with Professor Anne Burns, I then said, okay, I wanna keep doing research. And then I applied for a PhD. So it sort of all was a you know, catalyst from there. Great, Emily, thank you. The following question says, should we follow any fixed structure for action research? 
Well, I, I, as I um, sort of talked about earlier, I find that um, cyclical model of the um, plan, act, observe and reflect from Chemist and Mataggart, I find that a really useful way of thinking about action research to get started, but it doesn't always work like that. So uh, you might, for example, want to explore and um, observe before you act. So you might think, mm, I'm not sure what I want to look at in my classroom, I'm going to collect some data. So that might come first. So the steps don't go in that order always, and they're not uh, linear and, and straightforward and, and non messy. But I think it's a really useful way of continue thinking about it. So especially the idea that one cycle leads into another cycle. So once you've gone through one cycle of research, you've tried something, you've collected data, you've reflected, you've said, that doesn't work. How about we try this? Then you can go through to another cycle of action research. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one way to think about it. I, some things are missing from that step, those steps. I think that publishing and presenting your work is a really important part. You might do that halfway through. So after one cycle or after two cycles or three, it depends. Um, so that's one aspect that's missing. Okay, and uh, now uh, a question um, from Facebook. It says, mm -hmm. if you are doing action research, how many teaching hours you're given? That's from Jake. Let's see if you can answer that. Thing. When I was doing it, or is that the question? Um, when I was... Yeah, I think it's uh, something general because it says, if you are general. doing action research, how many teaching hours you are given? Yeah, it really depends um, on your on your context. So I think that um, so so for example, you're teaching a, a, a you have a 35, 40 hour week. Um, you might I would action research is always quite small, so you might focus on one class within that, or you might have the same class all week, and you might focus on one aspect of of that. Um, you'd need maybe a, a few hours um, on that day that you're focusing on to to focus to think about your project. Then once you've got started, you might want, you might use sort of an hour or half an hour every week to think about it. So it really depends how you set it up and, and when you can fit that time into your schedule. But yeah, you need more time at the beginning to set it up. And then hopefully it can be something you can, you can do as part of your practice. So collecting examples of students' work, um, talking to students during the class about how they're doing, observing students in class, then it shouldn't take too much time out of your, your teaching. Um, and then there's also the time at the end where you want to reflect and then maybe think about how you might publish or present the work. And that can take several hours as well. So it's really hard to say a specific number of hours, but I know that for me, it, it was many, many, many hours. And if yeah. you have, it depends on your personal situation and how many hours you have free as well to, to, to think about it. Yeah, it should be, we should integrate it into our everyday practice and everyday teaching, I think. Yes. Great. Um, Emily, one more question from Facebook. It says, what are the components of an effective plan of action that is designed to bring about change? Components of an effective mm -hmm. plan of action. Okay, so um, in terms of, with action research, uh, your plan of action would involve saying, what am I going to change? Um, what am I going to, um, to do differently in my classroom? So that might be a new activity, a new approach, um, a, new, um, a new way of doing something, a new uh, assessment task that you want to try. Um, and so that the, the plan involves having that designed, that, ta that intervention, that task, that approach, making it really explicit. So, you know, writing it down and, 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 um, and make, making that part of your plan. And then in terms of the success of the plan, I don't, think, I don't think it can necessarily be successful and that's not a bad thing if it's not successful. It's that you try something and then um, in terms of the observation, you need to collect some data to see whether it works or not in your context and why it works and why it doesn't work. Um, and that's part of the plan as well, that you have thought about how you're going to, to um, collect data. It shows that that works or doesn't work. So the way that you collect that data has to align with what you're trying to look at. Um, so that's part of the successful plan. But what you do might not be successful. And that's fine. That's, that's part of the learning process. So I think don't be discouraged if what you try out actually says, hmm, students don't like this or this is not the right way to do it because that helps you to, to move forward. 
yeah, and formulating more questions and going yeah. on with the next research study. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Emily, there's something else here. It says, is there any platform to publish the work of teacher researchers? That's some part. Yes, um, well, there's one that I work with um, as I'm part of the um, IATEFL um, research SIG uh, on, on the committee um, and working with Jessica, actually, who's, who's in the webinar, too. And we are co-editors of the newsletter um, and we publish short reports on, on teacher research. Um, so that's a really good way to to um, to publish. And I can try to put the link for that. Let me try and find the link and I can put that in the chat box. So that's one that I know of that I work directly with. I'm sure there are many other ways that you can publish um, teacher research in uh, teacher magazines and newsletters and things like that that might be connected with other conferences. Um, contact the teaching, so teachers association in your country because they might also have a journal of teacher research or um, you know a format or a blog or, or something like that where you could publish but um, the one, sorry, I'm just going to try and add that to the chat. I can just, I'll just put the name in here because I can't copy and paste a link right now, but it's the IA TEFL um, Research SIG um, newsletter. You Google that, then you should be able to find the website where we um, we ask for contributions every year, and it's published once a year. Okay, thank you, Emily. No more questions in the chat. Oh, thank you, thank you, Ashley. You got the link <laughs> there. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> thank you so very oh. much, Emily. Uh, today we listened to you know very thought provoking uh, um, concepts from you, uh, ranging from the paradoxes, tensions to ways of coping with them. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, how teacher research can benefit teachers as well, especially uh, regarding the sustained changes. Next mm -hmm. week, um, we're going to hear Kenan Dikiritash, who is going to talk about transforming teaching through research. So uh, I think he's going to talk about some similar ideas together with activities and tools for exploring practice. So I think it's time to say, uh, goodbye. I'm going to stop uh, sh uh, the slide and let's see. Uh, so uh, thank you so very much, everyone, uh, for joining us today. So this is uh, basically us. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for uh, viewers on Facebook for joining us as well. We're looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, seeing you on the um, for the next uh, guest talks. And thank you so very much for today's uh, talk, Emily. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. It was wonderful <laughs> to be part of it. And yeah. good luck, everybody, in the projects. <laughs> yeah. So bye bye, everyone. Thanks for today. Thanks for joining in. Hope to, uh, bye -bye. forward to seeing you for the next talk. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> bye.